Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at energy stored in a capacitor. So let's get started. We start by saying that since a capacitor can store charge, it can also store electrical energy. This energy can then be used to do various things such as lighting a bulb for a short time, for example, during a camera flash. However, we will look at practical uses of capacitors in another video. Firstly, we'll look at the work done in charging a capacitor. So it says the charging of a parallel plate capacitor is revisited below. So you might remember this circuit diagram from a previous video showing you the battery or the cell in series with a capacitor and it shows you the electron flow direction. So it says that we have already seen how current can flow in a circuit containing a capacitor. So just a reminder that electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery round here and build up on this plate here, causing this plate to become negatively charged. And then because this plate is negatively charged, this causes the electrons on the right hand plate to be repelled away and move around the circuit to the positive terminal of the battery. And this leaves behind a net positive charge on this plate. So we essentially end up with these two oppositely charged parallel plates and there's therefore an electric field set up between these plates going from the positive to the negative plate and therefore a potential difference exists across the capacitor. And remember the electrons cannot jump across this insulating layer of air. It says that as negative charge builds up on one plate, following electrons trying to move on to the plate must overcome the electrostatic repulsion force between the like charges, making it more difficult to do so. So we're saying that as the electrons continue to move round in an anti-clockwise direction from the negative terminal of the battery round to this plate on the left hand side, each following or successive electron will find it harder and harder to get onto that plate because of the negative charge that is already building up on that plate. So remember electrons have a negative charge, so these negatively charged electrons will be repelled away from this negatively charged plate and they'll find it harder and harder to overcome this thing called the electrostatic repulsion force to get onto this plate. In order to move charges onto the plate, however, the cell must do work against this force by supplying the electrons with enough energy. And we say that the work required to put charge onto a capacitor plate against this electrostatic repulsion force will be equivalent to the energy stored in the capacitor. Now we can actually find the energy stored in a charged capacitor from the graph of charge against potential difference for the capacitor. So it says here that the total energy stored in a charged capacitor is given by the area under the charge potential difference graph. So there's our charge on the y-axis and potential difference on the x-axis and our straight line through the origin. And we've seen this graph before. And remember the gradient of this straight line is going to give you the capacitance. And that let us form the equation C equals Q over V for capacitors. But we're now saying that the area under the graph, which is this triangle here, is actually equal to the energy stored in the capacitor. And we can actually form an equation for this energy stored by using an old familiar formula from maths, which is the area of a triangle. So remember the area of a triangle is equal to half times the base times the height. So if we look at our specific graph here, we've got potential difference on the x-axis and charge on the y-axis. So the base is going to be V, the potential difference. So that's a half times V times Q for the charge on the y-axis. So we have a half times V times Q, or if we rearrange this slightly, we get E equals a half QV, which is our first equation for energy stored in a capacitor, where E is the energy stored measured in joules, Q is the charge measured in coulombs, and V is the potential difference measured in volts. It then says to note the larger the capacitance of a capacitor, the more energy it can store and the longer it takes to charge. Lastly, we'll look at some more energy relationships that exist. So it says here that using a relationship between charge, capacitance and potential difference, we can derive two other equations for the energy stored in a capacitor. So since Q equals CV, substituting for Q in our equation for energy, E equals a half QV, we can substitute in the CV for Q here to get a half times CV times V, and notice the V times V here will give us a V squared term, so this gives us a half CV squared. So therefore, in the box, E equals a half CV squared, where the symbols have their usual meanings, also, rearranging Q equals CV for V this time, we can get V equals Q over C, and now substituting for V in our original energy equation, E equals a half QV, we get a half times Q times Q over C, just subbing in for that V there, and because of the Q times Q here, we get a half Q squared over C. So this time in the box, we have E equals a half Q squared over C, where E is energy stored in joules, Q is charge measured in coulombs, and V is potential difference measured in volts, and lastly C is capacitance measured in farads. 
So lastly, it says to note there are now three equations that can be used to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. You must choose the correct one to use based on the information given. So if the question you're dealing with gives you a charge and a potential difference, then you're going to use this equation E equals a half QV to calculate the energy. If the question, however, gives you a capacitance and a potential difference, then you want to use this one, E equals a half CV squared. And lastly, if a question gives you the charge and capacitance, then you want to use this equation here, E equals a half Q squared over C. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.